going? It's John. I thought I had, uh, I'm in traffic here, so I thought I'd talk to you all. I, I would like to talk about something. I had an interesting discussion on uh, one of my forums, uh, not one of my forums, a forum that I visit, and uh, talking about the idea of accountability in the church and accountability in, in terms of uh, discipleship in, in a person's life. And, and I've got to tell you what. Um, I'm growing in concern about the uh, what, what's really a very loose, um, um, disorganized church. I, you know, uh, the, the argument is, is that that there doesn't need to really be any accountability because if we just if we're loving and we are and we uh, you know we're New Testament believers and we have grace and all of that kind of stuff and then people will just kind of automatically tap into that because they'll sense the love and, and all of that and they'll just do whatever whatever needs to be done. And while I think that's a great concept and, and certainly we need to love people and, and I believe love is the primary driver and honor is a driver and all of that, um, we can't just presume that there, that everything is going to work according to plan and accountability is completely unnecessary. And we see in Scripture, and uh, I think it's First First Timothy, ah, I forget where it is, um, where the Scripture is, uh, Paul is writing, that's, in fact it might be First Timothy 1, where he says, uh, put what remains into order and establish elders is what, what it's saying. And so the idea is that that there's some disorder so we need to bring things into order, and and that always involves people. You know, it involves response. It involves um, becoming you know organized and 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 together and you know on the same page and all that kind of stuff. So we need to put things that are not in order in order. Then it says to establish elders, and the idea there is that there's a process involved. So people don't just casually suddenly fall into the you know into the uh, into a title of elder, there's a process there. There's things to be done, and and I think another way to another angle that we can come at is this the old, the, the idea of this this false grace message out there that's just doing so much damage in the church. A, a true a true grace message does great things in the church, but a false great me, grace message does bad things in the church. And we see the false grace message is rampant out there, and 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 and. And uh, attached to that is a complete dismissal or a remo removing of oneself from the idea of, of works. And so I believe there needs to be a biblical works message that needs to be uh, introduced again. And so, so, you know, and so what is that? Well, well, we know that the grace message is, is you know, it's, it's by faith. That we that we respond to the the wooing and drawing of God, right? And it's not by works. And so the idea here is, I can't do something. So I can't spend a thousand dollars and buy a membership into uh, uh, into heaven, into relationship with Jesus. And and the whole point here is that that it's a matter of the heart. So if I'm sitting here like, you know what? You know, forget all of the stupid other stuff that, you know, maybe let's say I have an attitude. You know, I don't want to be involved in all this stuff, but let me give you $1,000 and I'll buy my, buy my way in so I don't have to go to hell. That's what that's talking about. So we don't, we, you know, so we, we can't buy our way into relationship with Jesus. But that doesn't mean that we are not called to do stuff. The Bible says pray for the laborers, which means workers, people that are going to work. And so there is an expected work to be done. And especially when we're talking about the church. And so in the church, there are there is work to be done. You know, of course, we could talk about the scriptures that, you know, that say, you know, let me show you my works as an evidence of my faith. Right? We, we, we see that in scripture. And so, so there's expected work to be, to be done. So we can't be all organic and loose about this and just presumably things are just going to fall into place. Um, there has to be a, accountability. So, you know, I use the example, and this is a, should be a really clear example. If I'm on staff in a church and my pastor uh, wants me to, you know, when I was on staff in Texas, for example, as a youth pastor, well, I couldn't just show up late to a meeting. 
trust me, there were many days I would have loved to have slept in. And if, if I had my way, I, I would have done that. And, and, and the way the meetings went, I could have gotten the notes. And, but, so I could have just done that and slept in and not gone to the meetings. I could have, I could have, you know, decided to take a month off vacation and passed off my department to somebody else for that month. And there are all sorts of things that I could have done, but I would have been fired. Why? Because there's expected work to be done. There's accountability, you know, and then we can venture into sin issues. Well, there's, a, there's accountability issues in regards to holiness, you know. Um, some churches, for example, they have, a, they have a lifestyle policy where staff members are not allowed to drink alcohol socially. Well, really, whether you like that or not, if you're on staff, it's a covenant, it's an agreement. And so should that person be held accountable if they decide, if they're, if they're seen in the bars every Friday night? Well, of course they should be held accountable. So, so you know, to me it seems like obvious, biblically obvious, and common sense obvious. You know, and we see we see Paul bringing correction and to the church all the time, and 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 all of that. So that's you know you can't ignore that. Um, and so there, yeah, in the church there are things to be done, and you know, and 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 I believe a call to action is radically important. I believe if a pastor, for example, calls a fast then, uh, you know, and he, and he explains that this is an all-church fast and this is what's going on, that's what God's doing, well, then the church needs to fast. And, and uh, it, you know what I'm saying? And it's not to be heavy-handed or controlling. You see, a lot of this is because people don't like leadership or they don't like to be told what to do or they don't like this idea of submission or whatever. And, and so what they do is they remove themselves from that, from biblical government and and they fall into this organic kind of a thing, and it's just it's tragic, and so and it's not all it's not all bad. I, I should clarify that there are there are certain elements that people like that are grabbing hold of that are really good, and I think even you know in the institutional church that we 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 could we can learn a few things, but but to dive into this very very casual, loose. Uh, organic kind of this whatever happens happens kind of a thing that's almost like this hippie thing where we're just kind of whoa whatever just kind of hang out and do life together it's just uh it's it's not it's not effective you know i believe the church is a it's a it's a military it's a it's a it's it's where there there certainly are commanders not for the sake of the, that they get to command and, and, and rule people's world but it, they have a responsibility to get a job done and so there's calls to action so a commander is going to get a word of the lord say and god's going to say hey call everybody together for a fast let tomorrow night call everybody together for a prayer meeting you know uh let everyone know that you know this year um you know god's saying you know really consider the way that you're giving financially and and and, and bump it up a couple notches and or whatever whatever that is you know uh and, and there needs to be response and then and if there's if there's a lack of response you know we as leaders need to be like hey you know pulling pulling you know little you know Joe Smith aside or whatever, and I almost said little Joey. We're talking about adults here usually. <laughs> Pull Joe Smith aside and uh, say, hey, hey, is everything okay? You know, here's what the Lord's saying, and this is this is what that the way that we as leaders are are leading the church. You know, I don't see that you're buying into this thing where we're you know where we're fasting together and is everything okay? And yeah, you know, I don't see that you're really buying into the idea of you know being in the church you know with us in prayer meetings and things I, mean, I don't see you there you know I, you know I honor you as a person I love you I really want to pull that out of you what's going on there you know financially are you growing financially in the way that you give how's that looking for you and so we as disciplers and not only disciplers but those that are, are gathering people to fulfill a mission um, you know this there is accountability and there there are expected works to be done in the body so uh, yeah what do you think about this um, let me know. So blessings. Just driving home on a wintry night here in Detroit. It's nighttime. I don't think we can see a whole lot, but snow on the ground. Snow on the ground over there. And uh, headed headed home. We're going tonight, of course, at 10 o'clock. We're going to be at Joe Stasek's church, Dearborn First Assembly, uh, for the lab. So we're going to be praying from 10 to midnight. So I will see you there. All right. Bye.